Cool. I've been experimenting with um, five minute, three second increments. And how did it go? Uh, just, to see, just to see if that. Uh, I'm not sure. The mindset's a bit different for me, but uh, there's actually quite a lot of time on a five minute, three second increment. Like yeah, not, what you should do is to do a 10 10, that would be best. Okay. <laughs> but of course, yeah, I understand that um, time is scarce. Yeah. Right, perfect play so far. Now, you know that I'm a center maniac and you know that therefore I find it very difficult to speak against d4, which is what you did. But you also know that I love to attack knights that are attackable. Uh, d5. Maybe. d5 it is. Indeed, and um, the knight has got no good squares to go to, and after bishop takes, pawn takes 95 f4, the opening turned out to be a colossal failure for black. Okay, don't remember this. Two bishop, dominating center. No, you don't need to remember it, because uh, it's a motif, so the motif will yeah. burn itself into your brain that uh, d5 is called for here, because after e4, if they take here, you must take back with the pawn. Correct. Because otherwise it's hanging, and then after e5, um, yeah, structurally it's not necessarily very sound what we are doing here. Yeah. Okay, um, g6, d5 now, might be no, I think, I think that structure should... It uh, if it's the game that I'm thinking of, I think I did play Queen A. You did actually. No. Yeah. And then he took. Uh, yeah, after he blocked. Uh, yeah. Well, I shouldn't be looking at the game anymore, right? <laughs> it's over. Alright, why not with the C, Philip, so that we can come in here? Uh, yeah. It's... Okay, so I can tell you why I took the other way. I think that all my pieces are going to be aimed on the other side of the board and taking that way gives me a nice pawn train facing that way and that will slowly build up my position but yeah, I, I didn't have a reason Philip, since you are a piece up these considerations are out of the window you are basically now okay. trying to finish the game off as soon as possible and this move simply right. serves that I am way faster than the other one okay. so sorry to, to be clear you'd recommend then Bishop check and the knight blocks you take of just trading down? No, um, because uh, I'm also obsessed with pins, so I would put more pressure on the pin, Philip. Okay. And now, if they kick me out, then at least I can swap a piece and a queen on said pin. Okay. Yeah. And also, I'm not very keen on this opposite card castling now because, uh, yeah, uh, when we are ahead, we tend to keep things simple for the sake of finishing it off fast. Um, okay, what are we missing here, Philip? Um, <coughs> what are we missing? Hold on. I remember looking at this. I understand. Okay, so there's. The one thing I missed immediately is that B7 is hanging. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't uh, ever touch that. Yeah, but it does seem a little... Yeah, that shouldn't um, even yeah. come up. <laughs> um, I remember looking at this afterwards and not understanding the engine's recommendation to take on E6 was like plus two or plus three or something but I don't understand why really nice well I suggest so, you have a uh, have a second look at it then yeah because the concept is uh, very simple okay I th think oh boy right so yeah. Pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes on d6, and then you build up a massive attack on that knight, I suppose. Well, you don't need to go any further than this, do you? You want a pawn for right. nothing, you are attacking another one, you create the pin, it's like... Yeah. Hello, why is this not happening, Philip? Yeah. Like, your opponent just played total lemon, you need to look at 
the consequences, especially when pieces are hanging, about what happens if you take them. Um, now, given th that this is how this game went, it doesn't really matter. I gently would like to point out here that f4 was a possibility too, to even chase this bishop away and then giving you a chance of taking this with whatever you like. Right. It's not to say that capture was not good. I just wanted to mention it. It's just bit, yeah, here I made a mistake. I think here I should either play bishop um, to h3, adding more pressure. Yes, or, I quite um, like that. Or, yeah, or bishop f4, um, protecting the rook and sort of... Uh, yeah, and here you should have come back here. Actually, yeah, so the evaluation is quite interesting. The evaluation just ignores that completely and plays queen... Uh, queen d5. Look, um, everything is winning here, Philip. So as long as uh, you don't yeah. put your queen under attack, you're going to win. Yeah. Um, isn't queen f7 here winning, Philip? So I looked at this, but I did not see for some reason uh, the bishop g7 mate. Uh, you didn't need to see bishop g7 mate, you needed to see queen g7 mate, that's good enough. Yeah, I did, but I was looking here at uh, knight e5. Uh, Isn't that hanging this queen? It does, it does, yes. My vision was impaired, let's say. <laughs> yeah, knight e5 doesn't make sense on a lot of level because queen is hanging, mate is on, and this is on too. Yep. So I'm really curious how you could justify this as good for black when literally any piece that is capturable is winning for you. <laughs> like whatever I take, yeah, I'm winning. No, you're, I, I, so that um, I don't know if this actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm cur uh, confused about this mess. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This was mistakes. Well, if you wanted to keep, if you wanted to keep the queen, yeah. you could have played this for the record. Yeah. And then after takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen c7. Um, I that's... saw that I had a mate, so I just went for it. Yeah. That's gonna be tough. I mean, they didn't have to suck it in. Yeah. Actually, they did because after king g8, bishop e6 check, yeah. and then it's mate. This is a quite neat mate with knight f7, rook d8, rook d8, rook d8. I quite like that. Nice. As a checkmate, that's not bad. But look, this this game went uh, rather one-sided, and I like one-sided games as long as we win them. So that's good. All right, let's have a look at what happened here, Philip. What's this? Um, yeah, I need to look at my file again. I think uh, so. Play f f f six here. Yeah? Yes, and uh, you should know, Philip, as soon as you do this, that it's bound to be bad because it violates basic principles that uh, we are well aware of, such as knights before bishops. Yep. Yeah, after bishop f5, c takes, c takes, queen b3, and you're dead because you can't defend both of these as a direct punishment for playing bishop f5. Put it in contrast, if you had played knight f6, takes, takes, and queen b3 attacks neither. Right. There is a good reason, Philip, why we leave our life along these basic <laughs> rules of thumbs. Knights okay. before bishops. Bang. Well, I didn't realize the reputation was so harsh. Oh, almost always. Because otherwise these rules wouldn't exist. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and actually, once again, you are totally like messing it up because now knight f6 is too late because what happens in our line is that after knight c3, knight f6, knight f3 we need to take this forcing them to play a4 and then bishop f5 because if you play bishop f5 without taking like you did in the game then after cd, cd, queen b3 is still a hell of a threat to meet which by the way I hate to rub it in but it is in your file yes um okay now it's all fine and dandy um okay i would have considered he bishop b4 um just to counter pin okay right b5 this is interesting chess um yeah i'm always just trying to support the push of 
e5 is the only purpose of all these moves. Yeah, well, what he wants to do is to take here and here, but actually I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Yeah. So let's see how it went. Bishop d6 takes, 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 takes. Actually, there is an awkwardness here, Philip, because after c takes d5, you almost always want to take back like this, so that this pawn chain is in one unity, because if you take like this, then you have got now three pawn islands, and that's ugly. Right. And the two bishops don't make up for it. So you have to, you want to take like this, but actually this loses because of a tactical motive that you are going to tell us now. Um... Wow, okay. So it's why to move and win. Something is going on with the mic. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to adjust it because it's looking a bit weird. Sorry. Uh, okay. That's fine. It sounds better now, actually. Uh, what? Really? Yep, really. What is the first thing that catches your eye? Let's say you are white here, Philip. Tactical awareness. Uh, it's screaming at you, Philip, that this queen and this king is on the same diagonal, yeah? And that diagonal is totally bare. There's nothing uh, on it. Okay. Yeah? I yeah, yeah, okay, I see it. I it's see it. so, uh, it's you, coming at you. you. It's you... it's screaming oh. at you that tactics, tactics, <laughs> tactics. Yes. And yeah, hence, yeah. Um, actually, this was not that great because of that capture. C5 is the ultimate releasing tension and therefore is a total nonsense type of move. I hope that you identified it as such. Yep. Good. So, uh, and if I was perfect. <laughs> and now, what do we have here, Philippe? Two bishops, yeah? Yeah, I should have released it. Now, to be to be fair, this is your bad bishop. But yeah. because of the pawn structure still has fluidity, it means that it has still the potential to open up entirely, which means that both of your bishops will be brilliant and you will have the two bishops. Besides, if you drop back here now, after rook g1, it will be difficult for white to do anything with these pawns. Right. Castling is out of the question because you get to take there. As a result of the g5 pin, any other way, it's just awkward to stop rook g2. And actually, in this pawn structure, what is your only legitimate plan? Um, yeah, <laughs> so I can tell you what the plan is that I went for, is to put my queen and bishop on the same diagonal, and then bring rook onto the g5. And just attack the hell out of it with the pawns, castle on the queen side. I'm not so sure if I here. if I got that. So, what is your plan again, Philip? Here, uh, castle queen side and push the king side pawns. I, I guess. Where exactly right. do you want to push the king side pawns? Uh, like. You are being a little bit vague, so where is this going? F5? F4? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so actually the plan in this position, the only plan you can efficiently go for is F5, F4, right? Yes. Is it stoppable? Um, yeah. Let's see. With G3? Okay. Are you ever going to play f4 now, Philip? Mm. No. <laughs> Never ever? Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's not pleasant for white that they have to put all their pawns on black against the black bishop, but now, because of the static features, your pawns being uh, isolated and doubled, you are 100% stuck, mate. Yeah. And this all goes back to early swap and early release of tension. So here yeah, I... That actually did happen, yeah. I highly promote bishop e6, rook g8, castles, and then go from there. 
very simply put, there is far more life in the position, Philippe. There is a lot more to go for. Right. Whereas now you simplified it to a very basic one. Now that's a horrific blunder. Uh, positional blunder that is. Okay. Which was met by an equally horrific blunder on your behalf. Um, you played f5, Philippe. Why? I just wanted to open up the position. Well, that's too vague. Why did you? What do you mean? Open up? Open up the f6 square, or open up this diagonal, or what is it opening up? <laughs> no, the only reason for the, why you would play f5 in this position is because you wanted to play f4. There's no other possible reason to justify f5. Oh, sorry, you said f5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. So, am I right? So, did you play f5 because yeah. you wanted to play f4? Oh, uh, you're going to tell me I should... Uh, yeah, yeah. And okay, so, it, it, please explain why you are not playing f4. Because I, I tell you how I would be thinking, Philippe, if I was this, if I were black in this position. So I play f5, and then I go like, please, 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 don't play g3, don't play, don't play, don't, don't, no g3, no g3, no g3. Yes, he didn't play g3. F4, bang on. Okay. Okay, that is the only possible train of thoughts I can envisage as happening in someone's head when playing f5. Like, this is just such an illogical sequence of moves, isn't it? Like, yeah. you just played f5 announcing f4, and then now you just backed off from it. Now they played castle here, and this is where I'm going like, whoa! b6, how did that come about? Um... So what that tells me, Philip, is that you had no intention whatsoever to play f4 at all when you played f5. I can't look at it in any other way. Yeah, yeah which makes me puzzled because I don't understand the move then. <laughs> I think actually what happened here is I wanted to play f4 and then I decided that uh, I'll go for a different plan instead. Uh, castling. All right, now tell me, please, how does it make sense that you castle here and then you open it up there? <laughs> oh, I don't get it. Now b4, b5 is going to kill you. Queen check is coming in. I don't understand why we are even doing anything here. Not to mention the fact that your pawn chain, Philippe, is pointing that way, yeah? Which means that we are playing here. You have an open file against your opponent's king. Which is screaming for rook g8 followed by f4 followed by queen takes h3 followed by mate there. That's where you are playing. You've got nothing to do here. Like this is almost a self-mate attempt. Now they can already give you a check from which you only have one move to get out from. That was a crazy level of suicide. Ah, okay. So now I understand the point. So yeah, this is Philip. very, very... I want to be not really harsh with you, but this is very naive chess. Yes, so you are hoping right. to get rid of with this pawn so that you could put your queen here so that there is a mate threat there. Yes. That is very naive. Because even if it does happen, and you do get put this queen here after g3, you're done. You have done an incredible amount of self-damage for a sake of a cheap hole. Because that's what it is. It's a mate in one threat that I can stop without doing any self-harm. That's what it is. And you basically sacrifice your king for it. Uh, and instead, look at how I would attack rook g8, b4, f4. It's essentially game over already because they can't stop queen h3 and pawn f3 at the same time. Yeah, that, well, that is this is how you attack. There's no other way about it. Put the rook on the file, crack the position open and bring in all the guys. It's literally game over here. 
especially because after he takes f4, queen takes c, I'm not only threatening with mate, but the knight is hanging too. Pawn g3, bishop takes f4, and white can't stop, bishop takes g3 next, destroying the king's position. Yeah. That's an attack, yeah. okay? This is how concentrated forces on a certain part of the board operate well. Please put it in contrast to this. Does nothing, does nothing, still not an open file. And essentially, we haven't weakened the king's position yet well enough so that we could find targets. And your king is already dead. Yeah, like these are moves that are like far more than what you did before. But the problem is that because of what you have done before, they are not going to do anything now. B3. Holy cow. That is not in the top 50 moves that I would play. My top 50 picks for white here. B3 wouldn't be in the top 50. Okay. Uh, he, he just threw it away here. Um, how is this, Philip? Um... Is it better or worse compared to Queen G6? Yeah. See, I mean, you are attacking. What did I play? G6? Mm hmm. You went Queen G6. I like G6. <laughs> uh, I like Queen C2, Philippe, because um, it also attacks. Um, G3 indirectly, okay. but it also creates a pin. Yeah? You, you I don't necessarily that. see whilst I definitely say that black is winning here, I don't see your next move here. By which I mean I don't see an immediate finish off. If we do queen c2 instead, then after rook h3 I still have h4. Right. It seems to me it's falling apart. Also, you have yes. this move, which is a hell of a beauty, right. Philip, because it disconnects the queen from uh, the knight. I see. Oh, and after rookie one, funnily enough, the game is decided down here because it just trapped the queen. Wow. That's why, Philip, we play chess on the whole entire board. But that doesn't mean that we play b6 in this position <laughs> so we do play on the whole board but uh, we do it when it's timely isn't this hanging Philip? Uh... I will take yes for an answer okay, okay. just checking um, Queen E4 check seems to be doing the trick too I Sorry. don't I don't understand this move Philip a hundred percent. What's your next? Uh, I thought H4, but... Yep, yeah, what's your next after H4? Uh, what the heck? <laughs> yep, yeah, what's your next after that? Should take F4. Right, so that was one, two, three, four right. moves in a row, and we still can't right. give a check to the king. Yep. And if I ask Philip what your objective is in this position, I suppose your answer will not be to win these two pawns. No. No, right? Your objective is to absolutely destroy this king and demolish it right yeah. none of the moves yeah. you said served any of that purpose embarrassingly i only realized why four now is so good so yeah. like queen e4 check that seems to me that gives me an impression that you are going for the king yes yeah and after king h2 h4 once again 
checks are on the menu. Yeah, the king is becoming more and more exposed. In your scenario, it didn't. So you just right. replace these two with two black pieces, but sadly, g3, one being a pawn, you still can't give me a check that would do any damage to me. Yeah. That's not really good, but of course your opponent was kind enough to help you out with that one, and um, yeah, we called it a day here. Okay, so bishop f4 there for the record, but it's killing it on the spot. Oh, among a number of other things, yes. Okay, what are we supposed to do here, Philip? Uh, what did I play? I okay. <laughs> Maybe I got move orders wrong. Ask him, I want one of these. Uh, excuse me for for a second. Ask your mummy oh, out. Go. Love you, bye! Sorry, I had to be a little bit harsh because, um, yeah, sometimes the message doesn't get across. So, good. What, 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 sorry, I missed what you said. Yeah, I think I confused my move orders here. Like, I was supposed to play c6, and I went to. Probably, I, uh, what did I do before? Yeah, I went before attacking e4. Correct. And what would you have done after e5, Philip? Uh, I would have confused the line even more. Yeah, things. so now the next step, Philip, is, and uh, I have to ask it in a very tactful way because uh, I do understand that we are playing chess for fun and we are not time millionaires, but what you should do is look up the file after every single game. Yeah. Yeah, because here I have looked at two games in a row. Here, the opening when pair shaped or move free. And then here, oh sorry, um, here opening when pair shaped on move five. That's not good, is it? And um, especially not that given that you have got a file on both, so you should you should really um, yeah feel confident about this because. Certainly, you do not have opening files on everything you play. So, if something goes out of the ordinary there, you just go like, "Yep, yeah, I need to ask my lovely chess coach to provide a file because I have no idea what's going on here." But these files, you have been having them for a long, 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 long time. So, use them; they are for you. Okay, what is the correct move? Which is why this whole setup is rubbish for white. Huh. Because basically, Philip, what's happening now is that with move order issues, we return into one of the rubbish lines for white. So what's the correct move here? Let me give you a subtle hint, Philip. Center. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just looking. Uh, oh, okay. So D5. Take, take. No, no, Brian. It takes, takes. The center disappeared, you will have a central pawn, they will have a double pawn on c3. You are already way ahead. And this is the reason, Philip, why I taught you this line. Because on this level, out of five games, four of them is going to follow a similar pattern to this. That they will not know that they are supposed to play knight b5 here. And they are going to play a variety of absolute lemons like bishop here, bishop here. All of them are at bishop b4, d5, and you are already ahead. Okay, so... Castles here is a totally unimportant move because your king is not in direct uh, threat in any way, and it's more important to fight for the center while you can so while you can so efficiently. Right, so this is a disaster, yeah. Yep. So they go there and we run back to e7. That is already a major sign that something went really really wrong. By the way, why are we going back? I have got lots of good questions, Philip. Really. <laughs> did not know what else to do. Like, are, are you saying that so going back is what we normally do, so I do do that, or what do you mean? 
Like, are you finished with development? No. Uh, or have you finished fighting for the center? Awesome. Like, I, I don't understand this move because, yes, Bishop G5 does create a pin, but do they have a threat? No. So, why uh... do you. Yeah? Fire away if you think they do. No. I'm not seeing any, but. I could be wrong. No. No. So, why don't we play D5? Center. Okay. Center. Takes, takes. Now your bishop is free to run. I mean, bishop g5 is not a possible move yet because of the pin issues, but more on that later. But, you know, it's not like the b3 knight is picture perfect either. It's a totally playable position here. Whoops. Um, so, yeah, bishop e7, not a big fan of that. Okay, this part of the game is reasonably well played. G6, hmm. Hmm. Not a fan, not a fan, Philip. Agreed, of I was trying to find a way to deal with uh, G5. Okay, I would like to tell you uh, something uh, of the cut because it's very important that we understand it. Currently, white is threatening with zero. Yeah. Yeah? So I could okay, technically, so... I, I could play this move and not lose to anything. Wow, okay. So I thought he's threatening with g5 here, so maybe I need to look at this one. Knight g5. Yeah. Actually, sorry, I might be wrong. I, th I thought I had this one on. Oh, no, I do have it. So I don't understand why knight g5 is a threat. Beats me. Okay. If bishop check, then king here. If knight takes, rook takes, queen takes, king takes, and you have got two pieces for the rook. Game over. Uh, and the other thing is that knight f6 check is not threatening because after knight takes, you would defend the mate. Okay. So the only realistic threat is that they play c4, and when the knight moves from here anyway, then knight f6 check followed by mate down here. But even that I can hold off with g6 and if queen h6 then knight f5 and then move the knight away. Okay. So, once again, after queen h5, white is threatening with bugger all. Yep. So that Shoot. needs no. to be noted first. Number two, you have got knight f4 incoming which is ridiculously annoying because it hits the queen and the bishop and if you hunt this bishop it will be way ahead. Now knight f4 right now loses to knight f6 check and now we can't take back with the knight so mate is coming next. So we can't do it just yet. So what I'm looking at Philip is to play f5. Which traditionally is a move I wouldn't like to do because it makes this one backward and the weak, on, weak square on e5. But right now all the white pieces are so poorly coordinated that they actually cannot exploit any of these weaknesses. And if the knight plays to g5, then after h6 is a laughing stock of the white's position. And after knight f3, knight f4, you just won the game. Bishop, yeah. bishop yeah. drops, pawn drops, your bishop is gonna be a total monster. In fact, you nearly trapped the queen. So, yeah. As simple as that. This is just... Sorry? Yeah, sorry, this is just because I didn't see the, the h6 move. So, have... were you under the assumption that after f5, knight g5, this mate is inevitable? Yes. Because knight f6 stops it too. Sorry, I didn't consider h5 here. I didn't... Right. Yeah, so basically the bottom line, Philip, is that, I mean, it wouldn't be actually realistic, to be perfectly honest with ourselves, that you are facing an inevitable mate after knight g5, given that you haven't weakened your king side at all, and you have got two very well-placed defenders around it. Yeah. That just doesn't make sense that you should get it mated here. Plus, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a game in my life when knight g5 created an unstoppable mate threat here. Because yeah. even if the worst comes to worst, so let's assume 
I can't put that scenario on the board that there is no pawn here. Even then, there are funny yep. scenarios when you do this and then they take you, come here, and then you tuck away. Right. Is it horrendous? Yes. Did you get mated? No. Yep. So, all right, that's too much about this already. Knight of five takes stakes. Whoa. Yeah. You have to appreciate the generosity of your opponents, <laughs> Philip. That's skill. Um, I would have played here bishop e6 without any hesitation, but okay. Um, why did you play here b5, Philip? <laughs> um, I wanted to play b4 to undermine the knight. Okay, so stop, stop, stop. Watch what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> why not b4? You just said you went there to undermine the knight. I thought here you can just move it. Like it's not move a, what? Not anymore. Move the knight. Where to? F3. I don't think so, Philip, because I'm going to take it. But yeah, okay, I'll drop it back. Okay, have you achieved anything? They've given two pawn islands. <laughs> Thank you. Three total. Yes, horrendous living both of them. Plus we cleared off the fire for the rook. Any negatives? Yeah. Not really. Okay. I will. I will leave it open then, Philip. Uh, okay. You you will draw the conclusions. Yes. Where are we going with this? Actually, I quite like this. I'm confuzzled about this. Where are you going? Uh, I wanted to stay there, actually, and hunt down the pawns. Make sure they can't move. Okay, uh, that's interesting that you said that, because I want to hunt down the pawns too, so I thought, why wouldn't you go here? Because for the life of me, I don't understand how right. it's, it contributes to hunting pawns. You are actually three moves away from every single pawn now. And yes, I understand that you can use the rook for hunting them, but uh, this seems to me to be ridiculously back to front, given that there was a pawn to be had in one move. Yeah. Like, you can't defend it anymore. That's, knight takes b2 is your next move. The only thing they can do is knight d3, which makes matters worse, because now we have an additional backring made. Nice. <laughs> so this is uh, the most sure. Im yeah. impractical way to go about trying to hunt these pawns. I love it when I'm preaching against your moves and then they turn out to be genius. Strokes of geniuses like 93 here. Whoa, look at that man. This guy's on fire. Okay. Um, oh, what a douchebag this guy was. I actually did look at this game. Yeah. Okay, so c4 takes, knight c3, beautiful chess, c6, e4, beauty. Um, hmm. What is this? Um, <laughs> it's not developing, but no. stop him developing. Like no, this. you're right, so don't go any further, Philip. In fact, it doesn't do anything as far as development is concerned. So we are dominating the center, yeah? We are already ahead in development, but we're not done. So what I want, Philip, from this point on to our chest to progress towards is that moves like this will never ever be missed. Like the mere fact that you yeah. stop thinking here about what to do is concerning. And I think I did tell you this last time then we had a lesson that in an opening, you don't need to do things. Like if you have to stop and think about what do I do, it almost already means that you're on the wrong track. That's not the stage of the game when you need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to do what I always tell you to do. Chuck your stuff in the center and get your pieces out. As simple as that. If you do something that does anything different because you have got some intention in your head, with all due respect to you, more than likely not going to work. 
because sadly the inner logic of chess is such that after bishop takes c4 we are already threatening with bishop takes f7 4 by knight e5 check and taking this bishop yep. and that's how i wanted to finish up my sentence by the way that the way how i want you to think is that i want you to see it already before you take that when you take you're already threatening to do that so you play a move that develops a piece, takes a free pawn, and creates a winning threat. If I put Magnus Carlsen on the white side of the board here, he can't for the life of him tell you a better move than bishop takes c4. Why would you bother looking for one? And it's the simple logic behind it, of course, is because there is none better than bishop takes c4 for exactly the reasons described above. Here, black has to be re ridiculously careful not to lose immediately because on knight f6 for example i have this beautiful knight e5 yep and after That's bishop takes d1 bishop takes f7 mate these are philip things yep. that you should see literally here like you go like please play bishop g4 bishop g4 bishop g4 because you know that early pins with unguarded bishops is always a source of tactics and after bishop c4 here we come bang by the way after knight f6 of course bishop takes f7 wins too due to the same motive, but um, 95 is far more spectacular. Yep. Yeah, so these moves, Philip, like this, we really need to get rid of in your play. Um, okay, b5, bishop e2. And yes, I totally agree. You managed to stop this knight from going there. On the grand scheme of things, it matters not. Yeah, because I'm going to come into the center via here. Which is, by the way, a weakness you created by playing e5. Okay. Um, this is, by the way, quite good chess that you're doing here. I would prefer to play castles because, again, you are releasing tension for no gains as far as I can see. Yeah. So let's leave it on. And if we can gain something out of it, then I'm going to insert it. Any other way, I will leave it. Yeah? What's the benefit of taking? None. Yeah, now the knight can get out to a normal square. Knight d2. What's the intention, Philip? Uh, <laughs> I believe I was on this path b1 and a3 trying to attack but didn't. No, you weren't, Philip. You wanted to go to e4 and to d6. If you tell me that you wanted to put your knight back to b1, I will charge triple for my lessons. Um, what I wanted to tell you is that actually 92, 94, 96 is a really good plan. And that should be in the forefront of your thinking. The only uh, criticism I can basically say against it is that if you can go here via knight g5 as well as knight d2, no way on earth would I ever go back when I can go forward ever because this looks and feels intimidating and whilst i do not have any other intention than going back to e4 and then to d6 in some side variations it may be an important difference because now after takes take not, not only do you have 94 d6 but you might fancy queen h5 creating an awkward double threat on these two pawns Queen of three also looks quite good then. Hmm. Philip, we need to come to an agreement. You can't move your pieces backwards. Yeah. It's always bad. And we discussed it so many times. Like you have a beautiful attacking position here based on knight e4, bishop a3, queen g4. If knight b1 is the best move we can do, you might as well resign here. Because the only thing that it indicates is that next we are going to put this knight to, I don't know, knight a minus two. Like, look at how you just undeveloped everything you had. This, I have never seen a chess game where a plan like this succeeded. And this is why, by the way, I refer you to the classics, should time allow that. Like, Morphe in this position, good old friend Morphe would have played knight e4, bishop a3 and queen g4 in the next three moves, no matter what. 
yeah so when i tell you philip put your stuff in the center it's because that's from where you can go to places where they will be hurt from here the only place you can go to is back where you were so that you can go to places where it hurts okay moving on and by the way what was the plan against this uh, uh let's write this one off to be reactive chess huh? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that once again, you executed a, a horrendous and optically disastrous plan, which is very naive again. Like, what, what do you think they will do here? Let you take that for free? Like, you should always have, Philip, a very clear vision of what your opponent is going to do. And if you had this vision of, oh yeah, they will play A6, totally ruining my night, I don't think you would have wasted four precious moves on putting it on the worst square on the board. So, yeah, although I do believe that time may have been a factor in these decisions. G3. What's the plan with G3, Philip? to remember I think I wanted to maybe uh, I think I wanted to play four here okay which which I could have done anyway yes and it creates a ton of uh, weak squares around your king it puts every single pawn you have on black with a black bishop so yep weird uh, I would have preferred here something like f3 for by queen e4 because I want them I want to invite them to take so that I can take back and get rid of with all these strong knights. And so just for the argument's sake, I'm going to do something stupid. Plus, it would have allowed you to execute these tactics, which is the only justification of putting these two here. Yes. This was actually tactics I was hoping to get. But, um, yeah, but if you don't do for it, Philip, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So right now, this queen is covering it. So hence my desire to eliminate it. Now, this doesn't strike me like it's going to do that. Okay, so back. Oh, man. Where is this going? Uh, What's the follow-up, Philip, after F4? Assuming you had another move. Uh, G4. Okay, why don't you play G4 then first? Yeah. Which one looks like you are being the aggressor? Which one looks like they do something? Because the big difference is that after f4, h6, you can comfortably resign. After g4, 97, f4, which I still don't believe in, but finally we are doing something, and actually we are doing something on the correct side of the board. After h6, you just drop back. Right. Which is a million miles away from the previously mentioned we can resign scenario which is what just occurred on the board after f4 h6 because now if you drop back we just slaughter our own st pawn structure even further right okay oh my god a4 wow and then queen d8 this is classic quality chess so queen e4 was obviously winning on the spot the spot for black queen d8 queen g4 beauty that's the move i would have played Knight e7, rook g2, I really like that too. Queen f8, rook f1, I like rook f1. The only question that uh, I would consider, or the only plan, other plan other than rook f1, because I'm afraid that this pawn is going to run in, if he can play d5 here. Yes. And to be honest, I don't think it's good. But the only way for you, Philip, to win this game is to somehow get f5, f6 yeah. in, yeah? Now, you can't I'm right really now because try. it's covered. So I want to yeah. divert this, one of these, or potentially both, in order to play f5. If pawn takes after pawn f5, we are looking better than ever in this game. I believe that knight takes is stronger. And after knight takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn f5, pawn f6. I think that we are still going down. But at least it feels like you're putting up a fight for it. Yep. Um, rook f1, I'm afraid, is too slow. Yeah, you're going back again. Yep, that's where we lost this one. Right. 
correct. Okay, that was uh, a tad bit unfortunate. Um, yeah, I don't think, Philip, to be honest, that uh, we are... The 5-3 yeah, the five, the five is, is not good enough. Uh, by the way, why not E4? Uh, center, center, center. I've never played E4 in this particular position. Philip, you I, never ever I, had I this position in your life before. <laughs> or in similar positions. Where yes, that, you are correct, Philip, because similar position to you in your mind are the ones with Bishop B7. And yes, yeah. it's not possible to play E4, but you're not in that position. When your opponent plays G6, it's a horrendous move, and it should have registered in your brain as such. Because it makes a lot of weak dark squares in the vicinity and the bishop on g7 is misplaced and after bishop g5 because of its pinned you are threatening with e4 bishop g7 is not getting rid of with the pin hence e4 is correct wow <laughs> there are no such things philip like these kinds of positions when there is a massive difference like g6 makes this position nothing like what we are used to in the Queen's Gambit declined. It's like saying that, yeah, in this Queen's Gambit scenarios, we normally don't win a pawn, so if they play b5, I'm not going to take it. Well, hang on, there is a pawn to be taken. Normally, they don't do b5, so I will take it. If they play g6, I go like, hang on, that's total junk, so I'm going to play e4. You are not playing Philip from here on Queen's Gambit declined. You are playing chess. And therefore, the rules of chess apply far more than the opening knowledge of the Queen's Gambit declined because it no longer is a Queen's Gambit declined. Yep. Be mindful of that. You need to be, Philip, a judge and a very accurate judge of what's happening on the board. And so far, your only judgment is that what's happening on the board is the Queen's Gambit declined. Yeah, right. if they play this move, from now on what's happening is that your opponent just lost the game. It's not Queen's Gambit declined, so you're not going to play Bishop G5 because that's what we normally do. And I do understand that it's a stupid and drastic example, but this is yeah, okay. leaning towards, hmm, that's odd, punishment. <laughs> I didn't find it that odd because there's a lot of people that play this... Uh, that uh, will, uh, that sounds yeah. very worrying to me if that is correct. Um, oh my god. Okay, I don't like bishop e5 Philip. Bishops tend not to stand too well in the center. They like to be a little bit further away from it because they often get harassed. Yeah, yeah like did you have... Okay, ultimate case Philip, when you played bishop e5 and you had no guess of what they were going to do next. Because if you had seen knight d7 coming, you wouldn't have played bishop e5. Sorry, yeah, you're you're right. Um, I had in the back of my head here. Yeah, I wanted to drop my bishop, the other bishop, like the c2 queen d3, eliminate the knight, and then try and mate down that open diagonal. That he yes, we it. have discussed this, Philippe, That uh, yes. a you are Sorry. building your game 99% of the time in very naive plans. Very, very naive. Because once again, let's say that I'm just in La La Land, yeah? Please laugh at my moves as I'm playing them out. <laughs> yeah? Have you got a mate? Uh, well, you're not going to enjoy his position, but no. That's not well, when you say you're not going to enjoy your position, how is it, how are you going to make it uncomfortable for me? What's your next? Okay, granted, after takes, um, I have to take back with the queen, and now you win a free pawn here. So if I play, instead of my second stupidity, I just play c6. After queen d3, rook e8. I, I could almost, if I really wanted to be cheeky, claim that I don't understand what these are doing here. Because if anything, this makes your position worse compared to what it was before you took. There's nothing here. Okay. You're out. Yeah. 
you are totally out and that's again Philip another example of you finding and trying to find plans when it's no time for it you are not done with development yet your king is still stuck in the middle and by the way after bishop d7 knight uh, sorry bishop e5 knight d7 i really wonder how you figured that this plan was going to work so drop back castle or put the queen one of these two and then castle here and then you can plan by the way just by looking at the position right now i can tell you that in the next four to five moves if you want to play this game correctly your plan will be complete development castle and then play for e4 okay. that's it that's what should happen now this is yeah chasing the dream I don't understand Philip why this needs to be taken if you want to go here You're shooting yourself in the leg so hardcore with these takes that I really feel sorry for you because actually after take 6, queen d3, if they had played bishop f5, you would have cried about taking these two out. Right. I keep on telling you every time it comes up not to release tension and you regularly do this, do this and you always get punished for it. It is so sad to see. I really do feel for you. Because after queen d3, whilst this is a bad plan, at least it would have been uncomfortable for black to respond. Because now knight f5 is met by g4. And on knight g6, yeah. you could do something like h4, hassling that knight or pretending that you are hassling it. After c, d, e, d, queen here, bishop f5, I would be literally in tears as white. Especially upon noticing that without said releasing tension, the whole thing wouldn't work. Right. G6, bishop b3. Oh, man. Oh, oh yes. Dang, it doesn't work. I thought that you had a beautiful tactics here with knight takes d5, queen takes bishop b3, and then queen takes g6 check next. Which would have been beautiful, but sadly they have a check here. Which is, Philip, why you need to castle before you get into action. Yes. Actually, it wouldn't work for a variety of other reasons, including bishop f5 and queen f5, but I wanted to get carried away a bit. Okay, so, bishop b so, uh, That's why I took I remember now. <clears throat> I wanted to get rid of the pawn and try and use the pin of the king with the bishop to make the knight free. Okay. That's four. Okay. All right. What seems to me, Philip, here to be the only uh, reasonable way to defend the knight on f3. Uh, Before you say it, you can't go back. <laughs> I'm totally 100% serious about this, Philip. M moving backwards the pieces is no longer allowed. Okay. You have to open a, a piggy bank tin. Every time you move a piece backwards, you need to chuck in a 10 cent or whatever, and uh, we'll give it to your daughter when it's full. That's, that is contribution uh, for, uh, for the greater good of chess. Best way to defend the knight is to attack his knight, maybe? Well, I think I did that, so obviously not. Well, you attack the knight, it's going to go away, yours, yours is still hanging, so it's uh, only uh, trying to put out the inevitable. I don't see how you do this without moving backwards. Well, I'm, I'm insisting, Philip, because you, we need to be able to breach these, or rather jump over these obstacles and hurdles. Take your time, mate. It's, it's not like I expect you to snap the correct answer back at me in 10 seconds. And this is exactly why I'm trying to push you towards longer time control games. Because it's hard.
it's not a natural move in the sense that it's very natural actually in this position but not with the purpose of guarding the knight yeah and the reason why you find it difficult is because you are looking manually at moving a piece that then guards the other one whereas actually this move uh, is no such it, thing i realized that that move doesn't exist. What I'm looking at now is knight takes g5. But, no, that uh, that is not what I'm after here, Philip. I literally good. want to defend the f3 knight so that a piece of yours is going to guard it after your next move. I'm going to give you a very subtle oh, sorry, sorry. hint, Philip, oh, yeah. here. Okay, e4, e4. See, Philip, this is, again, a beautiful example of why we are so obsessed with the center. Yeah, that is... Because in this position, it is just the nature of how this whole beauty plays out that the correct move is E4, and it turns out that it actually covers the knight. Like, even if your knight was not hanging here, you would want to play e4 because you want to open up that diagonal, you want to bring this knight in. It just is the right move. Yep. It doesn't need to be explained because it feels correct. That's strong as well. Wow. Your opponents tend to commit suicide uh, on an impressive scale. Yeah, you have to play the thing here. No, it's not your fault. Okay, I am really hoping, Philip, that in this position, when A4 landed on your board, you realized Thanks. that we're no longer playing a Slav, yeah? <laughs> And in this position, the only justification for their a4 would be if you took on c4. Which, by the way, is theory. So we would go back to theoretical lines after d takes knight f3, yeah? Yep. Except that that would justify an absolutely horrendous move. But because of they played a crappy move, you get away with bishop f5 now, which you wouldn't get away with in a normal line, because then instead of this pawn here, this knight would be out here. And once again, after c takes, c takes, queen b3 would be dying. Yeah. But now it's not the case. I'm just hoping that it all registered in your brain. Uh, it does now. Just say yes. Just say yes. It's all good. Yes. Good old. Okay, knight d7, knight 95 same nonsense. This seems to be regularly coming back at you. Uh, I don't like this, Philip. When your opponent plays this and this together, it's already screaming for bishop b4. Now, given that they just played a total rubbish move that doesn't fit into anything, and therefore you are way ahead in development, you want to increase that lead by creating pins and creating frets. Yeah, so basically how you would have won this game in... Well, it's not possible to win it in shorter than this, is that after bishop b4, for e3 you play queen a5 and then um, yeah. you take this and then you just jump into e4 and this is hanging and now you're threatening with g5 bishop g3 and take the bishop if you want to pinch that but it's already very difficult to guard everything that looks to me philip look at the this the aggression and the purposefulness of the play bishop b4 queen a5 knight e4 this looks like I want to destroy you and evaporate you from the face of earth and I don't want to see you anymore, as in not you but my opponent playing chess, right? That's the impression that you should that I'm giving. And whilst I'm a very nice and kind and gentle guy when it comes to social affairs, on the chessboard that's your that's your only goal. You want to destroy the dude with your pieces versus theirs. It's as simple as that. It, it, you should be looking at yourself, and I'm not kidding, Philip, uh, not even a half a percent. Picture yourself being Mike Tyson behind the chessboard. So, to be honest, one thing I've been struggling with uh, since the last session, Yep. you told me to play the openings master, and I have tried to do this, sort of not thinking too much there. Um, but 
to adjust my pace sort of at the right moment again. Um, I wouldn't be concerned too much, Philip, about the pace of your opening play. Well, I was trying to, if I recall rightly, more telling you not to try to do things in the opening okay. which are time-consuming. Okay. <laughs> I've been trying to blitz out openings and then slow down and sort of keep. No, no, no. I don't want you to blitz them out. I just don't want you to think there, sit there thinking, yeah, 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 how yeah. could I win this game right now? Because the answer is you can't. Do what you always do develop your pieces, control the center, castle, and then start your action. Okay. That is because what I meant by don't try to do things. You don't need to do things. They will do the things for themselves if you do what you need to do, which is just castle, develop, center. And that's exactly what you did here. So I sincerely yeah. doubt, Philip, that this opening up to this point would have taken you more than half a minute. Exactly, it's 13 seconds. Perfect. 13 seconds. That's what it deserves. It doesn't. You don't need to do more than that. I mean, granted, after A4, I would have thought for a second because I'm going like, okay, how am I going to destroy the guy? Because remember, you are Mike Tyson sitting behind the board. So you want to destroy them for such a, uh, a meek defense. But it's not working yet, so you just do what we always do. Left jab, right hook, and just go on. And that's already way too soft. It's... Yeah, you can see I spent 20 seconds on this one. <laughs> see, to see. see, that to yeah, me right. is 20, 20 yeah. seconds wasted because if you spend 20 seconds on it, I don't understand how you didn't pick up on this possibility. Sure. Like 20 seconds, he tells me that you were hesitating between choices. Yeah. Well, you have got two as far as the bishop's development is concerned, or if I really want to go hard, I would say three. But out of these three, it's a total no-brainer that the bishop stands here by far the best. So unless it loses on the spot, you pick that. Okay. That's how I see it. A5. Dear Lord. Um, now, I would have played the bishop b4 again. Oh, actually, it's now a bit tricky because then a6 may hurt. May hurt. <laughs> Yeah, scratch that. The other thing, Philip, that I would consider here, and I would seriously consider that, is that um, your opponent is so behind in development now due to these two very crazy moves that I want to counter punch. Guess where? Keyword? Uh, knight f4? No, no, no. Guess where I'm going to strike? Yeah, center. Center. So this is how I strike in the center. I want to crack this thing open because I'm ahead. Uh, yeah, that's good actually. My only concern is that after knight takes, queen takes once again, we are facing uh, this very nasty bishop b5 threat. So potentially, if that was my plan, which it is, I would castle first and after e3 I would go c5. Yeah. And just crack it open. Because now what you did was that... Yeah, it seems to me like we lost the center. And um, we don't really have immediate threats. Now, this Philip is 10 cents going into the piggy bank right now. Yep. What, what's this, what, what is this move? I don't get it. Uh, yeah. I, I don't I understand. He was playing e4 next anyway. But e4 loses on the spot, Philip, and you see these things without even having to look at them. e4 loses to knight takes e3 followed by bishop takes e4. It is yeah. super basic tactics. So in fact, rather than running away from this, you actually want to invite it. So I would play castles here, hoping that the genius is going to play e4. Which loses on the spot. But actually, again, I'm still in the mode of striking because remember, you are Mike Tyson behind the chessboard. I really want that picture in your head every single time before every single move. The way how I would really do it here is not castles. I would take this and then I would play queen b4. Because that is how I'm punching them that I am targeting in one move three pieces. Thank you very much. That speaks aggression to me, Philip. This tells me that we are frightened. 
I have never seen in my life ever a frightened Mike Tyson. And I watched the dude a lot. So that's no go, Philip. If, if that's the best, you don't do it. You strike, you fight. Okay. That is very, very timid again. But uh, I suppose you didn't have a better choice. And then, oh my god, you got to love your opponents, Philip. It, it is just so yummy. <laughs> yeah. it, it is very, very delicious. Very yummy. Philip, I need to ask you a question. Have you ever seen this game in your life before? White goes here, black goes here. White goes here, black goes here, white goes here, black goes here, white goes here. You should already be able to say yes or no. Uh, yeah, this looks... Okay, you tell me how this, how this ended. That I can't tell you. It looks familiar to that mate you showed me earlier with my G5. So this is, Philip, how pattern recognition works, and this is what makes chess players better players than others, is that when they see something on their board, they can immediately link it to something that they either have seen or have known or both from the past. And that's exactly how my brain picked up that motif that I showed you, because this was probably the first game that I have seen in my whole entire life of chess, and definitely the first one I memorized. Okay, so this is how it goes. A6, knight takes e5, bishop takes d1, bishop takes f7, king up, knight mate. Wow. Okay, <laughs> literally seen, every single before, chess yeah. book that deals with basic tactics has this game in it. Now the knowledge of this game is going to grant you approximately 20 to 100 extra wins throughout your chess playing career because inevitably if you are an e4 player you are going to bump into dudes who fall either directly into this or an altered version of the motif yep. and as you can see from your own example even if you are a d4 player this motif is going to earn you valuable points yes. right this is the reason philip why i promote among all of my students a significant amount of reading of chess books because if you are only playing chess online and all your online active sorry all your chess activities are related to online stuff it's not very likely that you will be exposed to stuff like this which I would consider please take no offense in it basics yep I did say this to you before that you jumped a couple of steps on the way of your chess career in that you didn't go through these basic steps you sort of picked up some of them on the way you didn't some others and you became a better player than this level out of whatever but you are missing these basic uh, building stones or foundations from your game that would allow you to play openings far more confidently and to identify tactics far more confidently too because coincidentally if you look at this by the way other than the fact that there is a tactics in it, this game teaches you a ton about openings that you still don't get right on a regular basis on your games. Knights before bishops. Yep. Although technically bishop c4 is a perfectly fine move here, but please note how knight went out before bishop. Yeah. Central. Total central control. Yeah. And then total disrespect to material over direct threats. And actively looking for punishing passive moves and useless moves. So these are the main characteristics. And once again, this is nothing else but central control. Yeah, that's how simple it is. And then we can, of course, get fancy and put an extra spiel on it. And then have a look at um, this game as well. Just because they walk hand in hand very nicely. Bishop here, bishop g5. You will not believe it, but knight takes e4 is coming. And after bishop d8, bishop f2, king e2, bishop g4 mate. Wow. And once again, 
the exact same minus reverse colors and instead of two knights knights the two bishops that deliver the mate but the concepts are totally identical lagging in development creating a pin with an unguarded piece punishment on the go if you Philip just have seen one of these two games you would have guaranteed uh, made a connection between those games and this love game if I can still find it where are you Slav game here where the bishop just landed there and you are already thinking Philip about bishop c4 and 95 because of what I just showed you yes and basically the more you read the more you see the more your brain and your memory will store and once again the pattern recognition is going to kick in so what we are currently doing the reason one way why we can't really be super effective is because there is only so much i can show you on a fortnightly one hour basis there is not a lot that you can take away as a, a pattern or a motive that stands out so starkly that it actually gets engraved up there like now i'm hoping that this one will be but That's we cool, need yeah. to put extra on top of this uh, and that is why once again i'm promoting reading chess books regardless of quality and whatever it is plus uh regular puzzle solving and i do think philip and i insist on this that five three is not enough i now agree with you <laughs> right now before i let you go and sorry for holding you up um i want to ask you very honestly about how much time do you philip realistically have to play chess in a week because you are you are working full time you have two kids yep i am in a similar scenario and i'm finding the 24 hours ridiculously insufficient for a day it is and um, the time that i have is not um times where i can fully allocate my concentration right so maybe so maybe like two hours a week or something like this three hours a week see because the problem is that i'm giving you a lot of grief for probably no reason when the reality is that you don't really have enough time to study chess and you use that little time you have to play it <laughs> and that's totally fair yeah that's what i would do like i do i play tennis as a passion and I have got very limited time for it, sadly. And so I have to be very conscious of how much of my time I'm spending on buying lessons and how much of it I'm spending on playing actual matches. And it's a very awkward toss up. So that's why I'm asking, because if you had said I have got 10 hours a week, then I would say that we need to use the 10 hours more efficiently, because that means we need to right. reduce the play time at the cost of uh, increasing the learning time. If you have got three hours, stuff that, play all the three. <laughs> it's going to give us a, a far slower progress. Progression. But you will have far more fun. I mean, granted, you could use it one, one hour studying, which you are technically because you are with me, at least one hour a fortnight, and two hours of play. But that already is taking away 33% of your fun time. Right. Well, and uh, once again, I do know how precious it yeah. is. And everybody with a family, uh, with all its beauties and whatever it comes with it, we wouldn't trade it for anything. But it's hard. The concern is just that I pick up bad habits that are difficult to break later. Which is why yeah, I'm, and, and I, 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 as much as I would right. love to say, no, no, don't worry about that. Not likely. No, it is actually a realistic problem. No, it's very likely. <laughs> it's yeah. very likely indeed, because inevitably... And this is a basic rule of learning. You learn from your environment. Right. It's a proven fact that children learn just as much from their peers in class as from their teachers. Yeah. And me as a teacher, I quite like that. Although yeah. I think that I'm far more knowledgeable than any of my other kids around the classroom. But the more sources we have, the better. The problem with this chess pool that you're playing with currently is that indeed there are lots of influences there that are not good at all. Yeah. Which is very unlikely when kids learn from one another because although they do learn a lot of silly things from each other, but when it comes to academic knowledge, it's very rare that uh, incorrect information passes on and catches on. 
right. Whereas here in the world of chess, you see a lot of stuff. Like on 1600, anyone could convince you that playing a3 and h3 in almost every single opening is a brilliant choice. And they would give you legitimate arguments that could com uh, absolutely convince a 1600 who hasn't heard anybody before or after or after by chess someone better to actually contradict that. So yes, we are exposed to the danger, Philip, but I'm weeding out everything that is not meant to be there and uh, we are taking a slow but steady journey. That's what it is then. I wanted to ask you something while we're uh, still on the line. Yeah, I go on. To tr tr try at some point, if you have the time, a month where we don't do the Fortnite thing and just do it once a week. Yep, totally fine. Does that suit fit your schedule? Yeah, well, absolutely. I, I normally don't have lessons at this time when you are not online. So that what what that would cause is that that would guarantee that I don't forget that next week you are on, <laughs> <laughs> because then you are constantly All right. on. All right. Yeah. Let, let let's give it a try for what is this uh, June? Yeah. Okay. Well, please don't feel pressured. I'm I'm not pushing for it. No. In I fact, on the contrary. The not, yeah. Not a, as a result of the, the conversation we just had, I wanted to do this anyway. Right, okay, well I'm glad to hear that, but please don't feel obliged to do so, so you are in charge of what you think is best for you. But uh, yeah, happy to happy to play along. Uh, if you could send me a gentle reminder towards Friday-ish, that would be good because um, I may forget this. Because now finally I made the conscious mental effort of remembering that the time and the day when you are on. So now I will have to make sure that Philip is on. It'll be the same, just once a week. But yeah. I'll, I'll remind you. Yeah. Cool, it. All right, Philip, thanks a lot. Um, right, thanks, hopefully, it was useful, and then I will see you next week. All right. All right, mate, have a good one. See you later. You too. Bye. Cheers.